Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you a very useful way that you can toggle content inside Elementor without touching any sort of code. The plugin I'll be using for this tutorial is called Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. This is one of my favorite Elementor add-ons because it's backed by the Astra team and they offer really good support. So here's the website where you need to purchase the plugin. This is called Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. And if you click right here, it says widgets. You can see right here, when you purchase this plugin, you're gonna get access to all these different widgets right here. There's a lot of really good widgets in here that we use um, for our personal websites and for client websites. So as you can see, they have a lot of different things. They have WooCommerce stuff, some SEO things. Um, and in this example, we're gonna be covering the content toggle. This is, as you can see, a really popular one. And I'll be covering more of these in future videos, but they just came out with display conditions, um, we really like using the um, timeline. We've used that one several times. Um, there's some really good ways that you can filter your blog posts. There's, there's really good widgets in here. So if we go over to Content Toggle, let me show you some of their examples and what we're gonna be pulling off in this tutorial. So you've probably seen this on other websites where you can just toggle between you know annual, lifetime. In a lot of cases, this might be used for, as you can see in this example, uh, pricing structures. So you can give the user the ability to see you know, annual lifetime. And if you go down here, it's not just limited to like pricing list or anything like that. You can do anything you want. So in this example, they're actually showing the different widgets that they have, some upcoming features. You know, So you can pretty much anything that you can think of, you, you can put inside these toggle contents. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing in our example. And in this example, we're just gonna do a simple uh, switch between web design and e-commerce. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I was able to pull this off. Here we are on the back end of the website, and let me show you where the new widget's gonna be once you have purchased and installed the ultimate add-ons for Elementor. So if we just go into your widgets here and just type in content, you're gonna see a new widget called content toggle. So that's how you build out this whole entire thing. So let me show you how this looks by default and then I'm gonna show you how you can use a template like this to make it look a little bit better. When you pull it in by default, you'll see it just has a heading one and underneath content two is heading two. So this is how it's separated out is content one and content two. So everything underneath this is content one. Everything here, this is called content two. So by default, if you look here where it says section, this is what it is by default. So it's whatever you can put inside this little text editor. So you're pretty much limited to just having text and maybe some simple HTML. But if you want a more advanced design like this, this is where you can go ahead and start using templates. It's uh, very easy to do. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I was able to do these two templates right here. So if you've never used templates before inside of Elementor or kind of new to it, if you go underneath here called templates, you click on save templates, you can see right here that I already have the two uh, right here. I have one called e-commerce and one called web design. And if you look under here, it's called type section. So you could just save out different sections. So each one of these is considered a section. So this is one section, and then this is like the e-commerce section. So if you don't have any already saved out, what you do is you click add new, and just make sure that you select section, and just you know type in the name that you would like it to appear. Um, make sure that you name it something descriptive because you're going to need to reference this later. Um, so you want to make sure you can name it something you remember. So once you click new, it will pop up into a regular editor like this. And as you can see, I already built out these two. And it's a pretty simple layout. We just have two columns right here. So we have a column with an image and then we have a column with just a header, you know, just some text and a button. Now I do recommend going in here and making sure that um, everything is styled correctly so it looks good on mobile, tablet, and desktop. Um, this is because if you do need to make customizations to the toggle area, if you're using a template, you have to do it within here. You're not gonna be able to change any responsive modes for the section here inside the new um, widget. You're gonna have to do it at the template level. So just make sure you style it up correctly. So what I, what I did in this situation is I created the web design one first, and then I did a little trick where I just copied that whole section, and then on the e-commerce one, I just paste the new section in and then just change out the images. So this way you don't have to restyle the mobile, or if you have any custom padding, you don't have to like manually do that. You could just take the template, 
from the web design one, add it into e-commerce, just change out the text, hit update, and you're done. Once you have your two sections saved out, now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to reference uh, that inside the new content toggle widget. So let me go ahead and just delete this default one. And I'm gonna show you how I was able to build this out and how you can stylize this. So like I said before, when you first pull in the widget, it's always gonna be default to content. And so you don't want that in this situation. What you would want is saved section. So you click that. And then if you just click right here where it says select section, you just go ahead and choose the one that you would like it to um, toggle. So in this example, this is just called the web design toggle. And then under content two, same thing, save section. And I just chose e-commerce toggle. So now you can see when I switch between e-commerce and web design, it just triggers the two different save templates I have within Elementor. And just so you can see, you wanna make sure that the toggle is working correctly on mobile, desktop. You're gonna to wanna to kind of switch in between these modes pretty often to make sure everything's working correctly. That's it for the content area right here. Next, you can go into styling, and this is where you can change the switcher, the headings, the content, and any sort of spacing. So let's go here first, and if you look, you could choose if you want it to default as content one or content two. So when you change it to content two, of course it's gonna switch over here first. So whatever your use case is, just uh, change it right there. And they give you four different options for how this button's gonna look right here. So if you look, it's gonna look a little bit different here. Um, it's white, so that's why, why it's blending in, but you can see it switches. And then we have more of like a rectangle and a label box. So you can do on, off, on, off. So in this case, this wouldn't make sense to use like an on and off switch. So in this use case, I just kept it at round one. And of course, this is where you can change the colors of anything. So this will change the background color of that. So if you have global styles already, global colors, you could just change them right here. So that's what's nice about this plugin. And color two is when you switch it to the different mode, I just have it go to like this black color. And then the controller color is the white here. So what I do recommend is your controller color isn't gonna change depending on if it's on or off. So make sure that it's something that can contrast pretty well. So in this case, uh, a white circle is fine. And you can of course change it really large if you want. Um, I don't really recommend going anything too big because it's gonna be kind of awkward to use that on different devices. So something around 12 was, was good, I think. Next, you can just change your standard you know, headings. So you can change if you want different colors for each heading. So each one of these is considered a heading. So heading one and heading two. And it's the standard stuff right here. So if you wanna go ahead and change just one of them, you can do that. But I just keep everything kind of default. Because the way it works is right here where you see the HTML tag, if you want, you could just globally change how that's gonna look just by using your H tag. So in this case, maybe like an H3 would be good. Because inside the styling for the H tags, I just have H3 is kind of like this standard size. So you may be better off just using this instead of manually going in here. But they give you both options, so that's good to have. Of course, you can always change your alignment, left, right, center. And I like how you can change it uh, depending on what mode you're on. So that will be good. So for some reason you don't want it centered on uh, mobile, you can change it right here. And inline will mean it's gonna basically like stack them. So you're not gonna maybe want that on desktop. So I wouldn't keep that right there. But if you see right here, they have this button that says stack on mobile. So you can actually say, okay, on mobile, make sure it does stack those buttons. So that, that's a good option to have. Then under advanced, they have some other options here. If you wanna change like the background color of just that area, you could do that right here. And uh, border type, you know, just kind of standard stuff up here. Now, if you go under content, they have this button right here called advanced. And same thing here. If you want, you can change the background color of the content area. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it here. If you do want to change how it looks like this, I would change it at the uh, template level. So I would go into your templates and actually change the background color there. Now, one thing I did notice is if you hover over your section right here, you see that orange uh, box, that's actually your entire container for your template. So let me remove these and you could see right here by default, it has this extra kind of padding right here. 
So I figured out that you're going to want to make sure that this goes all the way to the edge. This would make it easier for you to adjust padding on mobile devices or anything like that. So you're going to want to stretch that all the way. So in this case, it just went under content, advanced padding, and just put it to zero. So you see now it's flush up against the uh, whole column here. That's, that's how I would like it in this situation. So under spacing, uh, you have some options here where you can adjust the uh, button and heading areas and kind of see how far you want it. Um, that's good around there. And then content and headings, you can kind of add some extra padding here if you like. So that's nice to have that option. So this all looks good so far. So let's go ahead and make sure that on tablet, it looks good. So on tablet, this doesn't look too bad. Like I said, if you do need to make any adjustments here, like if you wanted to make this one column instead, you would go ahead in here at the template level and go to tablet and change it to one column here, hit save, and then you would just come back into here, hit refresh, and then it will show like the one column. So that looks good. Now let's go over to mobile and that looks pretty good. I like how you can test it within the editor here. You don't have to like save it and go back out. So let's say on mobile, I wanted to change the heading. So they look a little large here. So you would just go under headings and underneath typography, you could just change that right here, something like 25 and 25 and then type that in. So that looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything looks good there. And I was making some adjustments before. So there you go. Tablet looks good. That looks good. So let's say you didn't want to stack it on mobile. You can change none here. But I would say in most cases, unless you're just having like a simple yes, no, you're going to probably want to stack it because you can see right here, you're having three things in line and it's, it's getting very cluttered. So you're going to probably want to stack it on mobile. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just hit update. Let's go to the page, make sure everything works correctly. Looks good on and off. And let's test it for mobile. So if I drag this over, let's make sure it looks good on tablet, mobile. So it stacks. Yeah, that, look, that works pretty good. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. If you'd like to support this channel, we do have an affiliate link for the ultimate add-ons for Elementor in the description below. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.